Welcome back to our daily study of the Word. This is when we as the pastors of Redeemer Bible Church walk you through the scriptures a chapter at a time. Well, we finished Titus, Paul's letter to Titus, and our next study is the next book. It's the book of Philemon. And the book of Philemon, again, was written by the Apostle Paul, but this is a, a personal, private letter. This is a letter we got a hold of and placed in the scripture, which was great because it really shows you the heart of Paul because he, he writes this personal letter to his friend Philemon about this runaway slave, Onesimus. And, and what happens, apparently, Onesimus, who was a, a, a slave of Philemon, for we don't know, was it because he had debts? Uh, was he born into that household? Remember, you didn't have a middle class. And so these were the working people. 90% of the Roman Empire were, were slaves. And so don't compare this to the slavery that we debate and talk about today. This has really nothing to do with that. But here we are, and what has happened is that some feel that uh, Onesimus had actually stolen something and had escaped. And he ran away and he gets as far as Rome. But he runs into, uh, runs into, this is called a God wink, uh, God's providential uh, appointment. Because he runs into the Apostle Paul because Paul's under house arrest. This is during Paul's first imprisonment in Rome. And, and Paul could still have uh, uh, guests. We read this at the very end of the book of Acts. So Paul could have guests, and apparently this Onesimus uh, shows up. He doesn't realize that Paul's a good friend with Philemon. Philemon is a good friend with Paul. But Paul leads him to Christ. Somehow Onesimus shares the whole story. Paul not only leads him to Christ, Onesimus serves him for a while, but Paul realizes he needs to send Onesimus back to Philemon. And so he sends Onesimus back, which was frightening because in that culture, Philemon could kill. He owned this slave. He could kill Onesimus. Onesimus could be going back, quite frankly, for his own execution. And yet Paul has confidence in his Christian friend Philemon that he's going to do just the opposite. So he sends Onesimus back uh, with the list letter, and this is the letter. And so let me just walk you through it because it's quite, quite interesting, and it will draw it to a point. So he says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved brother and fellow worker, and to uh, Aphia, our sister, and to Achippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul says, I thank my God always making mention of you in my prayers, Philemon, because I hear of your love and of the faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Philemon apparently was living out, walking worthy of that great calling because people observed his life, spoke about his life, and that became known to Paul all the way back in Rome. And so Paul knows that this friend of his is walking worthy of the call on his life. He says in verse 6, And I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. For I have come to have much joy and comfort in your love. Remember the joy means the absence of fear. Uh, the comfort of seeing his life being so solidly changed to follow Christ brought Paul great joy, uh, removed any kind of fear that he had wasted his time sharing Christ with Philemon. Anyway, comfort of your love, cause of the hearts. Then he says in verse 8, therefore, Paul uses therefore a lot, and therefore is always <laughs> there for a reason. He says, therefore, though I have enough confidence in Christ to order you to do what is proper, so he simply says, you know, I could tell you to do, and by my authority as an apostle, uh, tell you just need to do it. But he says, rather, I'm going to ask you to do it. He says, I am such a person as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He's referring to being there under house arrest in Rome. He says, I just want to ask you to do the right thing. So what is he talking about? Verse 10. He said, I appeal to you for my child, whom I have begotten in my imprisonment, Onesimus. Now that would have raised an eyebrow for Philemon. Remember your slave who probably stole something from you and escaped, ran away? Well, here he is, and I led him to Christ, who formerly was useless to you, but now is useful both to you and to me. You go, well, how so? And I have sent him back 
to you in person, that is, sending my very heart. So he said, I'll be tender here because I sent Onesimus, who I've led to Christ, to become one of my children of the faith. Uh, I'm also sending you my heart, whom I wish to keep with me. I'd love to have him stay here with me in house arrest because he's serving me and serving uh, the body here in, in Rome. He says that in your behalf, he might minister to me in my imprisonment for the gospel. But, but without your consent, I did not want to do anything that your goodness should not be as it were my compulsion, but of your own free will. I, I don't want to keep him without you choosing to send him to me. For perhaps he was, for this reason, parted from you. Maybe again, this was one of those God winks. God had arranged this whole thing. He says that you should have him back forever. He means forever. Not just a slave, but with you forever. How so? No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more, he says, how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord, says, if this you regard me a partner, accept him as you would me. And if he has wronged you, in other words, if he has stolen money or stole something from you, Paul says, in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. <laughs> and then I like what Paul does here. Kind of like, and oh, by the way, I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. See, Paul had eye problems, most likely had malaria after the first missionary journey there in the lower parts of Galatia. Well, some say that's the thorn of the flesh that he struggled with. So usually he would use a secretary to write his letters. Uh, he would dictate them. But here, this letter being a personal private letter, he wrote it with his own hand. He says, I'll repay it, uh, lest I should mention to you that you owe to me even your own self as well. <laughs> I love it. He says, I will pay you, uh, but remember, um, you owe everything to me because I brought you to Christ. A, a little, um, oh, I don't know what you would call it, persuasion. Well, verse 20, yes, brother, let me benefit from you and the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you since I know that you will do even more than what I say. So he says, don't kill him, but receive him, not as a slave to go back to work, but as a brother in Christ to partner with you in the work of the kingdom. And in that same time, also prepare me for a lodging. For I hope if I get out of this house of rest, and by the way, tradition tells us he does. He does get out and he travels a few more years. Matter of fact, Titus will travel with him and he'll do more kingdom work. But he'll get in big trouble, and that's when he's arrested the second time, taken back to Rome, and, and that's when he writes uh, 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 the prison letters and most likely the second letter to Timothy where he talks about, my life is poured out, and I'm about to die. And this is when they basically sever his head from his body. But at this time, this is his first imprisonment, and he's hoping he could get out, and he'd like to go visit Philemon. So prepare lodging for me. I hope that through your prayers I shall be given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. So does Mark and Aristarchus and Demas. Luke, Dr. Luke is with him, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Isn't that just a great private letter uh, between two friends who love Christ and the redemption, the protection, and the love? You see, Paul knew that that, that Philemon understood what Jesus said in John 13. In verse 34 and 35, when Jesus said, Now this commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, by this all men will know that you're my disciples. Philemon's already demonstrated he's a disciple of Christ. Paul heard the good news of his faithfulness. And so Paul knew that he would also remember why love was so important and his forgiveness of Onesimus and his embracing of Onesimus and love as a brother in Christ had everything to do with the credibility of him being a disciple of Christ. By this, all men will know you are my disciples. But even more important than that, he would remember what the Apostle John wrote in John 17 when Jesus was uh, praying in the a, in a Garden of Gethsemane and said, Lord, I, I pray for those who will believe after and because of these apostles' witness. And remember he prays, as you and I are one, Lord, I pray they would be one. So the world would know that I came from the Father. And so Philemon apparently also knows that it will be the way he treats this Christian brother Onesimus that will be a sign that Jesus Christ really does change a heart. 
because of an unchanged heart, well, then uh, Philemon would have executed Onesimus. But because his heart had been changed by the one who came from the Father, from heaven, it was a very evidence that Philemon's life had been changed. And so what a wonderful testimony of Philemon embracing the love of God and thus expressing it in forgiveness and restoration and the embracing of one who was a slave and now indeed is a brother in Christ, a co-worker with him for the kingdom of God. And I'm sure I hope that Paul did show up and be able to have a wonderful celebration about this story of redemption. It's a great letter. I hope it was helpful.